Hello, and welcome to episode 17 of Burns Banter, the podcast that takes a fresh look at the life and works of Robert Burns, hosted by myself, Alistair Turnbull. In this episode, I'm going to look at a very famous poem by Robert called To a Loose. Not to a moose, to a loose. A poem all about a head lice. Now I'm going to talk about where the poem is situated. I am also going to talk about the themes in the poem. Then I will read the original poem to you. Then a modern translation. And we'll finish off after that. So let's dive in and start talking about the poem. Okay. This poem was written by Robert in 1786, and it's set in the church. Now, I believe it's a church at Mocklin because he was living at Mocklin uh, at the time. He's living at a farm called Moss Gill. I, so I believe it's in Mocklin Church. And it's all about him sitting in church and seeing a woman in front of him, a very prim and proper woman, like a woman who's hopefully giving off the air of you know being very posh and affluent. But she's not. He's actually noticing in her hair and on her bonnet is a head lice. And he can't believe that this head lice has chosen such a prim and proper person to, to feast upon. And he uses this head lice to show us the difference between posh people and very poor people. And he shows us he uses this head lice, this very small insect, to show us how foolish we can look in front of other people as well. We think we look great but other people know we're looking really foolish and stupid. So it talks about perceptions. And it's one of the lines at the end of this poem you'll probably recognise because it's quoted quite a lot. So let's dive in and read the original poem. To a Loose, written by Robert Burns in 1786. Ha! Where are you gone, you crowling fairly? Your impudence protects you sairly. I canna say but you strunt rarely, our gauze and lace. Though faith, I fear ye dine but sparely and sick a place. Ye ugly, creepin', blasted oneer, detested, shunned by saint and sinner. How dare ye set your foot upon her, say fine a lady? Gay somewhere else and seek your dinner on some poor body. Swith, in some beggar's half it squattle, there ye may creep and sprawl and sprattle, with other kindred jumping cattle in shoals and nations. Where horn nor bane ne'er dare unsettle your thick plantations. Now had ye there, your out of sight, below the fatteral snug and tight, Na faith yet, yet you'll no be right till you've got on it. The very topmost towering height, O Mrs. Bonnet. Ma sooth, right bod ye set your nose out, and plump and grey as ony grows it, all for some rank mercurial roset, or fell red smedum. I'd gie ye sick a hearty dose of it, would dress your drodum. I wouldn't be surprised to spy you on an old wifey's flannin toy, or Albin's some bit duddy boy, ours wily coat. But Miss Fine Lunardi's fie, how dare you do it? Ah, Jenny, then he toss your head and set your beauties all abroad. Ye little ken what cursed at speed the blast he's mackin'. Thou winks and finger ends I dread are notice tacking. I would some power the gifty gie us to see ourselves as others see us. It would frame mony a blunder free us and foolish notion. What airs and dress and gait would lee us and e'en devotion. To a loose. Modern Translation Hey, where are you going, you crawling hair fly? Your impudence protects you barely. I can only say that you swagger rarely over gauze and lace. Though faith, 
I fear you dine but sparely on such a place. You ugly, creeping, blasted wonder, detested, shunned by both saint and sinner, how dare you set your feet upon her, so fine a lady? Go somewhere else to seek your dinner on some poor body. Off around some beggar's temple shamble, there you may creep and sprawl and scramble, with other kindred jumping cattle in shoals and nations, where horn nor bone never dare unsettle your thick plantations. Now hold you there, out of sight, below the foldrels snug and tight. No faith just yet, you'll not be right till you've got on it the very topmost towering height of Mrs. Bonnet. My word, right bold you root, contrary, as plump and grey as a gooseberry, or for some rank mercurial resin or dreaded red poison, I give you such a hearty dose flea, you address your noggin. I wouldn't be surprised to spy you on some housewife's flannel tie, or maybe some ragged boy's pale undervest. But Miss F Mrs. Finest Bonnet, fie, how dare you jest? Oh, Jenny, don't toss your head and lash your lovely braids abroad. You hardly know what cursed speed the creature's making. Those winks and finger ends I dread are notice taken. Ah, oh, would some power the vision teach us to see ourselves as others see us? It would from many a blunder free us and foolish notions. What airs and dress and carriage would leave us, and even devotion? Yes, I do like that poem. I can really feel Robert's amazement that this uh, lice has chosen this beautiful woman to be on. He can't believe it has done that. It really comes across in the poem. And he uses it to show us uh, at our weakest when we think we look great and other people know all our weaknesses and we see, they see us in a different light altogether. Again, the last lines are very well quoted. Oh, would the power the gift of gee us to see ourselves as others see us. It would free money a blunder free us and foolish notion. And that is very true. It would from many a blunder free us. I really like this poem, as I said earlier on. I hope you liked it too. I hope you now understand more about it. But most of all, I hope to see you on the next episode of Burns Banter. So until then, Slangevar. <laughs>